Better known as Mohammed Hassan in WWE right now. We appreciate him for being with us right now. This is four years of the bacon that we have. And we want to spend the time that we have with us. So we thank you for your time. We do. You know, diligent with me and talking to me all of these years, that means a lot to me. You get what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I really appreciate that. So I got you on here, Muhammad Hassan, as y'all know him, <laughs> and WWE. <laughs> we got the man, Muhammad Hassan, Mark, kid, love, love, love. We got him for about 15 minutes, 12 minutes, 13 minutes. We got him on. Let us know how you feeling. What's going on, man? How you, how you feeling, bro? Oh, no, I'm good. I'm trying to juggle my children right now. Uh, text them and ask me for stuff. But no, I'm good. I, I'm really good. You know, I work. I'm the director of human resources in the school district. So right now, it's one of the busiest times of the year for us. Just trying to get everybody prepared and ready for the kids to start coming next week in New York. Uh, so, but I'm good. Everything is good. Drinking a little coffee, stay awake today. Um, you know, another day. How about you? You doing good? How you feeling? I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling all right right now. He's dealing uh-huh. with Skype problems and all of that. I'm feeling good <laughs> yeah. right now, but I got it's you on, you know. Te- technological difficulties with the former teacher. It happens all the time. Exactly. It definitely does. You know, you got your kids. How your kids doing? How's your family doing? Let Everybody, us know how you. Everybody's good. I got four kids. I got my oldest daughter is uh, Lily, and she. I'm actually taking her to. She does beach volleyball at one of the local bars down the street. She's uh, 16, and um, she's going to be a sophomore in high school. Uh, she's doing really well. She's a tremendous athlete. All my kids are good athletes. My. Uh, I had two twins, Mila and Lana. Um, yesterday, they were trying out for modified soccer. They're going into seventh grade. Lana ran a 5.55 mile. Um, and Mila was not too far behind her. They were the, the first couple to finish out of like 40 or 50 girls. Uh, my son, Sam, is 10. He is basketball and baseball. So he's starting up basketball in two weeks. And he's actually going to be starting training for baseball in a couple weeks as well. So we're very busy, which is why it's been four years in the making. Um, you know, we have uh, four children, four athletes, and uh, three separate practices and three separate tournaments and three separate games. So it's, it's um, you know, on top of that, in uh, 50 plus hours of work for me and my wife, we're just, you know, we're a busy family. So like I told you earlier, I don't do a lot of interviews. I've been doing a lot more recently um, than I had in the past, but it is. It's just really hard to schedule time to be able to sit down. Like I said, I plan to sit down with you for an hour, but little did I know I had to take my daughter to uh, volleyball in about 10 minutes. So um, it's just kind of hard to get everything, you know, everything in these days. Um, but other than that, everybody's good, healthy, happy, great kids. You know, I can't complain. Well, that's cool. Now, um, how do you feel with your life after WWE? You know, with you having been working in the school system and I mean, your, your transition, how was that for you? I, I feel very fortunate that I am one of the few wrestlers that uh, realized that I was not going to have the level of success that I had when I was younger um, and that I had something else I was passionate about to fall back on. I don't think that happens too often. I think a lot of times with professional wrestlers, in order to be able to put yourself through that grueling schedule and the the beating that your body takes day in and day out, you have to be incredibly passionate and very focused um, on wrestling. And so I think with a lot of wrestlers, their passion um, doesn't allow them to stop beyond a point where they should. Um, And I think for me, I was fortunate enough where I realized not on my own accord. And, you know, that's another story, but I realized that my time in wrestling was most likely up and I would never have the level of success that I did as Muhammad Hassan. And I had something that I was passionate about that I I wanted to pursue and I pursued it. And um, I've been in education now 15 years, um, almost 15 years. This is my 10th year as an administrator and I spent four years as a teacher. So 14 years 
I've been in the business of education and it is, I mean, I enjoy it more now than I did 14 years ago. I, I love what I do. Um, I love my ability to reach staff and students and to improve their lives and to do everything I can to make sure that they're being successful. Um, very different role as a director of human resources than as a principal or a teacher, but I've embraced the role and it's been very rewarding for me. So the transition was pretty easy. It, it wasn't difficult. My past as a wrestler has never been a negative for me. Uh, it really opens a lot of doors for me as far as connecting with kids and as far as connecting with their parents and other staff members that I work with. Uh, they all find it very interesting. So I'm able to utilize that as a positive and as a strength and it breaks down some barriers and it allows for some conversation that I can then use to help facilitate the conversations that I need around student growth and student success. And again, using my staff members to the best of their ability to provide for kids. So it's always, it's always been a positive. And like I said, the transition has been pretty smooth. It's, it's, um, People still recognize me as a wrestler and I have no problem talking about it, but I think people who work with me know me more as the educator than the wrestler. That's a good point. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, with you dealing with, most people know you as Muhammad Hassan and dealing with that instance that where it was like, okay, we got to change some kind of stuff. You know how it was. I want the time. Did you know anything about that as far as, you know, but not 11 and dealing with a lot of issues going on with changing up stuff? Did you have any idea of that change of just the 9 11 and just the, the change of just? trying to figure out stuff, did you have any idea that beforehand of that? Did I have any idea prior to the character being canceled off the of television that it was going to happen? Is that what you're asking? Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, I had, I had somewhat of an idea because the character started to take on a different tone. Originally, we started with a character that was maybe not sympathetic, but at least validated in his anger and his position on what was happening in America at the time. The character evolved over the course of that year to become a character that was more radical um, and more of a fanatic as far as Islam is concerned, which I never agreed with. Um, but again, as a player in that game, there was not a lot I could do. Um, you know, there was the people above me that were making those decisions. I mean, I did my own promos, but I was given the tone and the content as far as what I should be saying. So I had an idea that it wasn't going to last. Um, and I did think that the SmackDown move was not a great move because you can you can get a little you can get away with a little bit more on network versus cable um, and even though what we did pushed the line and eventually because of London bombing it got us canceled off of television I don't think that would have went well on cable or network I felt like we could have probably gotten away with more on raw plus raw was my family at the time so when I got moved to SmackDown. Mm -hmm. It yeah. almost felt like that was the beginning of the end for me. Um, and eventually I found my groove on SmackDown, but it wasn't very long after that that we did that segment with The Undertaker. And I had an idea that, again, we were pushing boundaries, but I, I didn't think it was going to end that abruptly. But um, the London bombing changed everything. So, yes, I had an idea. I just didn't have an idea how quickly we were moving towards cancellation. That's a, that's that's a great that's a great uh, response that you had. Now, how have you, how have you responded? How have you had dealt with the the adjustment of being WWE towards what you do now? You know, was it like an easy adjustment for you to say, okay, this is what I do now? You know, working with kids, working with you know, being a vice principal, being with. No, I'm know, not vice principal. I'm the director of human resources, but I was an assistant principal um, for quite some time, and then a principal as well. So I've actually been a teacher. So I've worn a number of hats in the field of education. Um, it was a pretty easy adjustment for me. I was always a little uncomfortable with that level of recognition and fame. Mm -hmm. uh, the only way I can describe it is I'm typically shy or reserved, um, and if you get me talking about a topic that I'm interested in, I mean, I'll talk. I, I'm, you know, outgoing as, as 
far as that goes. But um, it was, it really wasn't something that I craved or enjoyed was being recognized on the street or, and I still get recognized once in a while by true fans who remember me and who may have seen me, you know, I, you know, I've been in the local news, um, you know, for being the principal of a school coming from wrestling and a few other things. Um, but it wasn't, um, it, 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 the only way I could explain it. And as I said, when I was out performing, uh, I had the ability to control that response. I had the ability yes. to control that level of fame and recognition. But when I wasn't, I almost just kind of wanted to be able to fade into the background and be able to do things without having to deal with it. So as far as transitioning, I moved to Los Angeles for a while. I worked on screenplays. I worked in production. Nothing really panned out with the level of success that I had hoped for. Um, and so I came back home to Syracuse and I kind of started all over again. Um, going back to school, getting my, I went for two years to get my, um, my degree in education and then my master's and then my CAS, which is your certificate of advanced study in educational leadership. So I, I spent the last eight years in school really prior to becoming, um, an assistant principal. And I, I've never really had a problem talking about wrestling, but I, I don't go up to people and say, Hey, I used to be Muhammad Hassan, you know, remember 2004, 2005, it's never anything that crosses my mind. I'm not the kind of person that really dwells on my past. Um, I'd much rather look forward to my future. So I, I'm not going to tell you what I did, but I have no problem telling you what I'm going to do and the success that I'm going to have. I'm pretty confident as far as that goes. Definitely makes sense. It does. It does and it does. Um, how, was your, how was your response with dealing with that instance where you was on SmackDown, dealing with that, you know, that, that instance, you know what I mean, where you was there with, on SmackDown, you have the instance, you're there, Bill Muhammad Hassan, and then you're there with Undertaker, and then you feel like, okay, <laughs> what do I do now <laughs> with the instance where they kind of took you off TV or... The 9-11 issue or the issue what happened how did you deal with that well it wasn't 9-11 it was a london bombing we came out you know we didn't debut until over three years after 9-11 um i didn't really know how to deal with it because i didn't really know where it was going uh, originally we thought we would be able to have our own pr campaign and kind of fight against it maybe we change my name maybe we come out and say you know, I'm actually not Arab. I was portraying a character. Um, we didn't really know where we were going until the heat picked up to a point where sponsors were threatening to pull from the program. And, and really, there was no choice but to pull me off. Um, you know, so initially, I didn't realize that was the extent of it. Um, I knew that it was, I mean, I knew it was a big deal when I heard it was in our local paper in Syracuse, and it didn't even mention that I was from Syracuse. So it's not like it was a story about a local person with this issue. It was a story about the issue globally. Um, and it was in Time Magazine as well, and I'm sure a lot of other papers. So that's when I realized the impact that that had had um, and uh, the, pub the um, publicity that it had picked up. But uh, at the time, when it first happened, I didn't realize it was going to be to the extent that it was. Once I realized it was to that extent, um, it was it was heartbreaking. It was difficult. I spent a lot of years training and studying wrestling, and it was something that I was passionate about and I loved doing. Uh, maybe not every aspect of wrestling, but I, I mean, it, being in front of the crowd and, and working with one of your your colleagues to put on a show, it was um, it, it was definitely something I enjoyed. Um, and it was, it was heartbreaking when I realized it was going to be taken away. It took me years to recover from that, that sort of heartbreak. How was it working with Undertaker at the time? You know, Undertaker has been, of course, the GOAT, working with so many different people. How was it working with him at the time? You know, did he help you? How was it like, how did you feel working with him at the time? It was great working with The Undertaker. I mean, really, Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Chris Jericho, Triple H, uh, Kane, uh, and many more were incredibly helpful. Um, they were, you know, they were obviously the best in the business, and Undertaker as well. I mean, I don't think anybody has a bad word to say about The Undertaker. He's a consummate yeah, of course. locker room leader, always good to me, always very helpful. Um, he gave me a lot. Um, as far as when we were in the ring, we worked a lot of house shows together. 
Um, the first time I ever came out for the WWE, I was Mark Magnus in Louisville when I was wrestling for OVW. And it was during a match with The Undertaker. I was part of their organization called The Revolution. And I came out and I got the big boot and a choke slam. Um, and then I think I got the uh, last ride as well. So that was the first time I ever experienced any sort of action in a WWE ring. And the last time I experienced action in a WWE ring was against The Undertaker with the same thing, choke slam, power bomb through the stage. Um, so I, I love that I, my career was kind of bookend with The Undertaker. I, I can't think really other than The Rock, just because obviously The Rock is um, still is and always was one of my idols, just the way he conducts himself, his professionalism, the way he connects with people, how he treats people. You hear about The Rock when you're wrestling, just the way he treats people backstage, um, it really kind of solidified his reputation as just you know one of the greatest of all time. So other than The Rock, I can't think of anybody better to have my career begin and end with than The Undertaker. Um, you know, you could talk about Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels, all of which, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin, um, all of which are some of the greatest of all time, you know, rightfully so. But when you really look at what The Undertaker was able to do in reinventing himself and making each character relevant uh, and, and so popular that becomes part of pop culture, um, whether he's the biker or he's the dead man or he's, I mean, there really isn't anybody who was able to do that as well as he did. Like The Rock, again, is one of my idols and he's amazing, but The Rock was kind of always The Rock after Rocky Manavia, um, you know, and Triple H was always kind of Triple H and Shawn Michaels was always kind of Shawn Michaels. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? But yeah, the, it makes the, sense. Yeah. the Undertaker, he uh, he reinvented himself into a lot of different, uh, just a lot of uh, different characters, so to speak, um, at least different representatives of the character who was the Undertaker. And, and he is uh, by far, like I said, I mean, I consider him to be one of the greatest top three all time. And what would you say would be like your most memorable experience being in WWE? That's pretty, easy. That's pretty easy for me. Um, Madison Square Garden, I had a match with Shawn Michaels. I'd worked him, I think, in Austin not too long before that. I worked him several times. And Shawn is, as far as a technical wrestler, as far as a baby face, I think Shawn and Chris Jericho, I would say, are probably the two best that I've ever worked. Um, and I always try to use the, you know, the explanation for Sean and Chris. They're very similar. They go where you want them to go before you even think that you want them to go there. You hit Shawn Michaels with a punch, he bumps, and he's in the corner. And you're thinking, man, I want him to go to the corner. But before you even know it, he's in the corner. Like, he's so intuitive and just so great at selling and really drawing emotion from the crowd and such a great technical wrestler. Um, he's just so easy to work with. So I had the match with Sean at Madison Square Garden. And at that time, there just wasn't the level of – publicity and there wasn't as much you know as far as the internet sites like people really didn't know that hulk hogan was there so when hulk hogan came out after davari and i were kind of beating down sean after we got disqualified it was um just to be in madison square garden being a new yorker in the middle of that ring um watching hulk hogan come down to a uh, real american was probably the most memorable moment in my career maybe not the best but to me the most memorable just because I will never forget. I grew up watching I mean, the Hulk Hogan, Andre, the giant feud. I grew up watching. I remember watching, I remember the song when Andre ripped the chain off of Hogan's chest at Piper's pit. Um, I remember the match at WrestleMania three. And so now here I am um, with this connection through Hulk Hogan to Andre, the giant, who was another one of my, my idols, my heroes growing up. And, and I can at least always say that, I wrestled Hulk and Hulk wrestled Andre. So it, it kind of gives me a connection to my past and, and people who inspired me to become a wrestler, uh, as well as just the pop from the crowd that night was absolutely unreal. Like I've just never heard anything like it. Um, it was literally, it, it like lifted me off the mat. That's how loud and amazing it was. Now, do, do you feel any type of way of your last... A lot of people look at it, you being Muhammad Hassan. Okay, we see you last being, you know, choke slams, you being away from WWE, being on SmackDown. Do you feel any type of way from that, or do you take that as like an honor 
for you. Has a what? I'm sorry. I was saying this, Ross, like a lot of fans look at it as like, oh, you Muhammad Hassan, you being there, okay, the last time we saw you, you got you know, basically ousted in WWE. How do you feel about that? Do you feel that that's an honor for you, or do you feel like that's an honor? Because the last time we saw you, we saw you got choke slammed, and that was it. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. I. I, um, I mean, how often in the WWE do you see a character get killed off? Uh, Not. A- not often. So I, I take that as an honor that that character had such an impact, um, even though it eventually became a negative impact, that they felt the need to kill the It's not like I just disappeared. They like literally killed me off, you know, on the, on the ground with blood around my head. And then the character never came back. So I, I take that more as an honor. Um, the fact that they had to go to that level to, you know, the, those lengths to get rid of the Muhammad Hassan character. So no, I, I mean, the only the, the match that everybody watches. So you, here's what I feel some way about. Obviously, John Cena is one of the most popular wrestlers in the history of the sport, in the history of entertainment. Um, my match with John Cena got cut and we were supposed to have, I don't know, eight or nine minutes. It ended up getting cut, I think, to four. So we really got through the shine and then we were getting to go home. So I didn't get a whole lot in. And as a teacher and then as a, an administrator, um, you know, John Cena was still pretty relevant up to a couple of years ago. I know he's retiring soon. And, you know, John, obviously, like I said, is one of the best in the business. Um, he could probably go another 10 years if he wants, but I'm imagining that his body can't take it because I just can't imagine him, Randy, those guys that I started with or started a couple of years before me, the level of pain that they deal with day to day is is a lot yeah. more than I could probably imagine. But yeah. Kids always watch the John Cena match, and I got my ass kicked in the John Cena match because we really had no heat because we had we got cut. So they're always like, not always, but you know, kids will be like this, and I think it's funny. Um, like you got your ass kicked by John Cena. I'm like, dude, you get your ass kicked by John Cena too. Like you know, it, it's uh, that's the one match that I wish we would add a little bit more time because it's such a popular match for people to watch. But um, as far as the Undertaker ending my career the way he did, I take that as a great honor, um, and it's something that. Like I said, you don't see a lot of wrestlers get killed off uh, on the show too often. So uh, it was kind of special. Evan, I don't mean to cut you off, buddy, but I, I got to get going. No, I totally appreciate it. Like the time you got and the time that you gave us really means a lot to us because I know you got to take care of your family and everything like that. But we got to do a part two soon, you know. We make sure everything good with your daughters and your family. So just hit me up. Let me know. You know, in a couple of weeks when you're free, we got you. All right, man. Sounds good. I will definitely do that. Yeah, for you. So I appreciate you, brother, for the time that you spent with us. This has been Under the Mat Radio, live, live, live. Tech, Under the Mat Radio with Mark, you know, Muhammad Hassan. Being there, telling you about his story, everything he's done. He works for the the public system of basically, in general, health and dealing with public health and dealing with school health. And that's what he does. He's done, he's done a great job. And definitely big ups to you for doing it. All right, Evan. Thank you. You take care, okay? You take care, brother. And uh, we'll be talking in a couple of weeks. We'll have a part two, and we'll get more in depth for your career and everything that you've done. All right, man. Sounds good. Take it easy. All right, brother. You take care. Thanks, man.